which are stock revenue share training leads and healthcare. Those are the five pillars of EXP. And every single company says they have leads and training, right? So we have three more legs to our company. We have three more. We have revenue share, stock, and, and healthcare. So when you think about when we're all individual agents as an independent, you're selling 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 100 homes, and at some point, Tyler Chestnut's gonna go, this sucks, and I can't sell any more homes. I'm human, and I have to grow a team. And then he's gonna do what Marty did, and what Sharon did, and what April did, and start bringing agents on to help him because he has so many leads. From there, you're gonna realize that you're training all these amazing agents who are going to leave you one day, and they're going to go be your competitor, which is fine, but that's just the natural evolution of team. So think about this, guys. Brokerages are genius. You know, Gary Keller taught me to go out and build a team, recruit agents, train them, house them, and when the agent decides they're ready to grow on, where are they gonna go? They're gonna stay with Keller Williams. And so I've just recruited, trained, and retained the next generation of realtor for the brokerage. That's every brokerage, but I think Keller Williams was genius at doing that, that whole system, right? So when you think about um, evolutionary scale of brokerage, and my next was I wanted to build a brokerage. So now I'm building a brokerage. I have 300 agents, not fair. Marty took 15, 20, 30 years, 20 years to build a brokerage of 80 agents. Was your height? Yeah, height. We had over 125. 125 agents and it took you how long? 20 years? A few years. A few years, so <laughs> a few. But I'm saying, think about how fast we can grow. Marty's gonna have probably 2,000 agents in a few years in her brokerage and she doesn't have to babysit them. And I think that's the coolest thing that we all have the opportunity to bring 40 people on, now it's 300. You know how brokerage started. This is a little history lesson. Brokerage started with companies like Colwell Banker, C21, Remax, Keller Williams, Realogy, and you've got EXP, right? So since 1908, all brokerages ran the exact same way, right? So every single brokerage ran the exact same way. Century 21 dominated the 70s, Remax dominated the 80s, Realogy actually dominated the 90s, and Keller Williams dominated the 2000s. The only difference in this evolution was that they kept changing their commission splits. That was it. That was all they were doing. They were just battling for the agents and changing their commission structure. Keller Williams was the one company that changed their commission structure with a cap, because Remax was 5%, 5%, 5%. Now you're at 80 grand, 100 grand a year. Remax, or Keller Williams said, there's a cap, people, and we have profit share. So we're gonna help the agents by making this recruiting effort where if you bring on an agent and you sponsor them, we're gonna reward you that after we pay all the light bills and pay all the salaries and pay everything we pay, the crumbs at the bottom is called profit share and you guys get a little piece of it. And that was actually really profitable for agents. So this is how brokerage started. Um, the, the thing that, the, the way that they did this, I'm gonna change this real quick, is each company, each of these big companies, they started out with their international brand, right? So you've got an international brand. Then they divide the nation up into regions. So I can say to Cuesta, do you want to own North and South Carolina? She goes, yes, I do. Great, it's 300 grand Cuesta. You have now the license and rights to sell franchises to Marty Hampton and Tina Call. And you go to Cary, North Carolina, and you find me and you say, do you want to buy a Remax franchise? And I say, oh yeah, I do. Okay, it's 250 grand. You can either, or Keller Williams, you can either do it with investors or do it yourself. I take all the risk. I buy the franchise. I buy the McDonald's, right? So I'm now the franchise owner. Now I, as the owner, have to go out and buy the building. I have to go get the recruiters. I have to get the staff. I have to pay for the coffee. I have to pay for the, the, the couches. I take all the risk. As the owner, I'm taking all the risk right here. Dave Linegar and Gary Keller are not taking any risk here. They're, you're literally buying their name. We're putting our capital in to start the business. And then at the bottom is us, the agent. And this is how the structure has looked since 1908 when the first company started. And everybody was on a 50-50 split, everybody, until Remax and Keller Williams changed their, their commission structure. So we are the MVPs. We're, all of us in this room have gone out and sold tons and tons of real estate to pay 
for this infrastructure, right? And all of these owners at the top are on a revenue share plan. Regardless of what happens in the brokerage, they didn't say, Marty, you're not that profitable this month. Don't worry, don't send me my royalty. It's fine, girl, we love you. That doesn't happen. So, so the company at the top, they're smart. They're on a revenue share plan. They know that if they get a little cut of thousands of agents, they're gonna be millionaires and billionaires. And so this was the old model. Well, our, our founder, and I never put anyone on a pedestal, he was just an agent just like us. EXP's founder said, I'm at Keller Williams. I'm doing all these expansion teams. It's just not working. It's not profitable. And being an AOL nerd and a, a stockbroker, he decided since Amazon, since, since Airbnb, since Uber, since Netflix, you think about the, what's the number one hotel chain in the world? Airbnb. Airbnb. Everyone says Hilton usually, but Airbnb, we know that because we're cloud-based company. They don't own real estate. So when you think of Airbnb not owning real estate and they're the number one chain in the world, we are in that category now. Wall Street loves us. They love EXP. So when you think about it, he got rid of this, this, and this. So he's actually changed, it's a true disruption, the dynamic of real estate. And he's brought the agent up to the top and he said, hey agent, we will make you part owner. We'll share 50% of company dollar with you if you help bring agents to the company. So you're truly gonna be an owner and you're gonna get revenue share, just like these people. So we have this amazing opportunity. We are in a disruption model for sure, 100%, because again, the only thing they changed here was commission splits, that's it. And profit share, which was genius. This is a 35 year old company. This is a decade old. So this is our decade, 2020. Okay, the next 10 years. Now, what are the disruptors? What did we talk about? What are the five pillars of EXP? Rev share. Rev share. Stock. Stock. Healthcare. Leads. Healthcare. Leads. Leads and KV Core, right? So I tell everybody when I get to this, I paid $1,000 a month for my website. It's free now. I saved 12 grand right there. And my CRM, $400 a month. I don't have to pay for it. And now you get um, training. And so, who is training you at any other company? It definitely wasn't Marty Hampton. She's not training you at that office unless it's her office. But at Keller Williams, they kept asking me to go train. Now, it wasn't that I'm not a nice person because I am very nice, but I was running a team. And so I'm looking out for my team, who is my family and my family. I'm not gonna go train <coughs> Keller Williams agents unless Keller Williams pays me. And to be on the ALC and all that, it's lovely, but it just wasn't valuable enough. But EXP now is saying, hey, if you bring on an agent, which, you know, I'm gonna make 800 bucks from Questa or 2,800 bucks. It's not gonna change our lives as a whole, but eventually if we can all be the leaders and learn the systems and help each individual agent grow, then this is gonna work. This is actually gonna, gonna help the structure because here we were dependent on our broker and whatever their structure was to make it work. And their business model is recruit an agent if they have a heartbeat. If they have a heartbeat, bring them in. <laughs> because every brokerage, you have 300 agents and you can look at every single one, because I've studied them, you've only got 10 or 12 people producing. That's it. So everyone's on the spaghetti method. Throw spaghetti at a wall, maybe two deals will stick. Six. That's it. So the average agent sells two to four. Well, that's really profitable for brokerages, but you're gonna get lucky and you're gonna get a Jason, and you're gonna get an Edric, and you're gonna get some really top players that wanna grow, but we just don't have anywhere to grow to. So that's the first thing I think, when, when he showed me that, I never really, I was like, oh my God, you're so right. I was like literally just a little, you know, just a little employee at McDonald's making the cheeseburgers, and they're making the money, even though we all make a lot of money, but I understood the structure. So you guys all have this same opportunity that you are an owner just like these people, except they had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this model. Now, Jennifer Cervera has 35 agents in her brokerage and her capital risk was 150 bucks. That is so cool. That is so cool.